Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir by building things. Today, we have the solution to the challenge that I gave you last time, which was to create a new module that used the counter process we made last time, and also add a controller process to it that would start and stop the counter for us instead of us interacting with the counter directly. I've already copied it over into a new module and loaded it into IEX. So in case you missed the last video, we can just spawn a process and see it in action quickly before we start. We'll save the process ID in variable CPID. Spawn challenge module counter function and no arguments. Now we can send this a message to start it counting. We'll start it from 85 this time. So CPID and the number 85. And you can see it is starting to count. I've slowed it down a little bit. It's uh, every three seconds now. It had been more before. And to stop it, we'll just use the same process.exit and CPID and any atom we want. And this command that I just used to do this, uh, I, I passed it OK, which I did last lesson. Turns out that it doesn't really matter what we send it. If you send it normal, then it will behave differently than if you send it anything else. Traditionally, people would send it kill, but we can send whatever we want to it. And it's already killed, so this isn't going to do anything more. All right, so we basically just want to make a controller process that does the exact same stuff we just did in the command line. Uh, let's go up here. Here, why is it selection? There we go. All right, we'll call our new function controller since this is going to be process that controls the counter controller, and this will have one argument, and this will just be the PID of the counter. So we'll call it counter PID. As before, the body is going to be a big receive block, and this receive block will just take messages. Uh, the first one we'll do, we'll just query what the PID of the counter is, and then inside of here, we'll do an io.inspect, and we're, since we're storing that in the function, it'll just be counter PID. Then we will need something else, but I'll leave it like this for now. Then we'll need start to spawn a new counter process. And we'll do this basically the same way we did before. So counter PID equals spawn. And actually, there is another syntax for spawning a process. Instead of passing it the module, the function name, and the array, we could just pass it in function. And that is counter, which has no arguments. So we'll call it like that. And after spawning it, we'll have to send it a message to start it. And we'll start it at zero, since that makes the most sense. Actually, we'll start it at one. And then finally, we need a way to stop everything. So we'll make a stop message. And when that comes in, we'll use process.exit. Counter PID and kill. Okay. And finally is the recursive part because otherwise the process would exit as soon as we receive one message and we want to have it go back and keep on listening each time it receives one. Let's call it controller and counter PID. There is one problem here and that is the receive do block is a scope. So that means this counter PID is not the same as this counter PID or this one. So uh, we can receive a start and we'll get a counter PID. We'll save whatever uh, process ID comes back from spawning this counter, but this won't be used and then we'll make the recursive call with nil, so it won't work. We can fix the problem by moving this recursive call into the receive block and we'll have to put it on every single condition that can be received if we want the controller to keep on running. And that's what we'll do. And we'll put it here. And we'll also need a default condition. If we don't have a default condition, some other message could cause everything to fall through. So, like so. And that 
should be good. Let's see here. Yeah, we should be keeping track of the PID in every situation. So we'll save this and then we'll open up IEX and reload. So we've reloaded it and we're not going to touch the counter process. Instead, we're just going to make do with the controller and use PID, start, and stop. So we'll spawn a new controller. So uh, actually, still need to keep track of the controller's PID though. Uh, spawn, challenge, controller, and no arguments. And send our controller PID, PID to see what the PID of the counter process is. And there isn't one yet, that's as it should be. Now let's send it a stop. That was an error because you can't kill uh, a nil process. And see, it's not responding anymore. We'll spawn it again and we'll tell it to start. Okay, and we've got one, two, three. It's counting as it should be. Now let's stop it. Actually, let's check the PID. Got the PID. Call it to stop. It stopped. Now let's try telling it to start again. Excellent. And we'll check the PID. 109, and before it was 105. So you can see it's a different process. We've just started a different counter. And let's stop this new one. All right, so that's the solution to our challenge. And hopefully this has gotten you started thinking about some more things you can do, and maybe even wishing that there were a way to have your processes automatically restart whenever they died. And don't worry, there is a way. If you want to learn more about Elixir processes and OTP, then subscribe to the YouTube channel and make an account on alchemist.camp and you will get more. See you next time.